Welcome to our first podcast of Unit 7, which is at the top of page 2. And our focus, a lot of our focus the last couple weeks was on ionic compounds. Um, we named covalents. So we know that covalents are made with two nonmetals. So what we're going to do is look at the bonding and a little bit more details of what goes in the bonding. So Lewis dot, remember this comes from the valence electron. So having a periodic table out in front of you is probably going to help because what we need to do is really focus on those electrons. Okay, okay, so to get started, let's just do a quick reminder. We know that for ionics, okay, valence electrons is what group it is. Everything in group one has one valence electron, one dot. We use that, okay? Group two, group three, yay, 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 yay. Okay, I'm talking about covalence. So remember covalence, we're talking about nonmetals. So let's not waste our time. Don't know why it's working. There we go. Let's just focus on the um, dots on the nonmetals. First nonmetal that we can't forget that it's really is a nonmetal, even though we don't know where to put it, is hydrogen. Sorry. It's got one lone, one little valence electron. Then let's skip clear over. Okay, boron. Going across the first period. Has three. Then what do I have? I'm doing this from memory. Carbon would be next with four. And yes, I am that much of a geek. Nerd, nerd. Carbon, what's next? Nitrogen. Nitrogen has five. Oxygen, six. Fluorine, seven. Okay, we're not going to worry about the noble gases because we're talking about bonding and they don't want to play when we're um, talking about bonding. Okay, there's an octet rule. Maybe kind of add that. It's just what it sounds like. Octet. Atoms want to have eight um, valence electrons around them. So octet, eight valence electrons. Okay, now hydrogen is a duet meaning hydrogen can only have two electrons around it. Remember that, please, please, please remember that. Okay, look at our rules. They're written here. So, what do I have first? First step, count valence electrons. That's where the periodic table comes in. Okay, now when you start looking especially final and we start putting it together, you, do, you can't skip this step, whether it's ionic or covalent. It's like, oh yeah, how am I going to know that? Look at that first element, whoops, first element, and ask yourself, okay, is it a metal? And then I just wrote right over everything. That's what you ask yourself. Remember that. Is it a metal? Okay, then what? If it's ionic, that's when we use the bracket. That's what you tested on. Those were the brackets. Okay, this is going to be our focus now. What if it's covalent? Okay, put the least electronegative needs to go in the middle. How do I know that? Remember, fluorine is the most electronegative, so it's going to be the farthest, and I don't know where that R came from, excuse me, the farthest, furthest, you know I don't teach English, from fluorine. The furthest away, and it should be a furthest, okay, fix it, write it how it's supposed to be, away from fluorine. Look at this. Highlight circle. Please don't make me put a sad face on your t quiz. Hydrogen is never, ever, ever, ever in the center. Hydrogen also never, ever, 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 ever gets dots. Hydrogen's too small. Don't put more electrons around it than it can. It only can have two, the duet. So let's kind of look at what happens. Let's look at hydrogen. So over here, hydrogen. It has one valence electron. Here's another hydrogen. It has one valence electron. So what they do is say, hey, we need valence. Oh, let's get together. So they're going to share these electrons. So now hydrogen looks like it has two and is stable, has that two, that duet. This hydrogen is going to get together and say it has two. They're sharing this right here. This is your covalent bond when you're sharing the electrons. Okay, let's look what fluorine does. Um, find some space. Look what fluorine does. Fluorine has seven. Fluorine 
has another 7. We talk about those diatomics. What happens? They want 8, so they're going to share and have 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. So now we say that these guys have formed a bond between here. So this is the covalent bond. Well, we get tired of drawing the lines. What happens sometimes they do, you could show it like this and show that those two electrons between them, so anytime you have two electrons between an atoms, you are assuming they're being shared, shared electrons. Okay, what we do is we get tired of writing all of those. So what are you going to do? We say a single line, one single line equals two shared electrons. So one line equals two electrons. Okay, so let's kind of go, this is what we're going to have to do. So we count that. Then what we do is acids. You know what? Let's just not worry about that now. We'll come back when we start doing acids. Okay. What you need to do is get eight electrons around it. Most important thing, eight electrons. Okay. There are some exceptions and we'll come back and talk about these, but for right now, eight electrons. So two ways you can get those electrons. They can either be shared between two atoms. This line only happens between atoms. Or you can use lone pair. Okay, unshared, these are also called lone paired. They are paired. Electrons always have to be paired, but they're either going to be a shared pair between atoms or you get a lone pair that are just hanging out on the atom itself. So up here at this flooring, this would be a shared pair. Two, four, six, these are going to be your unshared pair or your lone pair. So let's go through these steps. So add up valence. So carbon has four. It has four valence. Each hydrogen has one valence, but there's four hydrogens. So you add that together, you have eight electrons. Eight valence electrons are available. Carbon goes in the middle. So you're just going to put a bond around each hydrogen, uh, around the carbons. And you would say, okay, carbon needs to have eight around it. So each line needs two, so you go so two, four, six, eight. Carbon is good. Each hydrogen only wants two. Well, two, 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 two. So you've completed your drawing using only eight electrons. So this is it. This is the Lewis dot structure for methane, or excuse me, carbon tetra um, tetrahydride. Okay, water. Let's add them again. Oxygen has six valence electrons. Each hydrogen has one, so total valence electrons available is eight valence electrons. Okay, now oxygen is pretty electronegative, it's close to fluorine, but hydrogen can never ever go in the middle, so that's why oxygen goes in the middle. We'll put a hydrogen on each side. A lot of times you just space things out. So then we're going, okay, each hydrogen is happy, two, two, but oxygen wants to have eight, so two, four. Now you fill in the rest with dots six, eight. And you really, really need to be thinking pairs. And some of you who aren't the neatest need to get neat because how you draw it really makes a difference. So then you're saying, okay, to double check, two, two. Then oxygen needs two, four, six, eight. It's good. And now it's stable. And I did all this with only eight electrons. Okay, NH3. Nitrogen has five plus the three, eight electrons. So what happens then? You go, okay, nitrogen in the middle. I'm going to put a hydrogen, put a hydrogen, put a hydrogen. So each hydrogen's good. Good, two, two, two. But nitrogen wants eight, two, four, six. So we have to put the dots to have eight, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. Okay, we can draw them for ions. We said these were covalently bonded. So we add up all the electrons, and this is when we work on our multiplication. So each oxygen has six valences. Sulfur is in the same group, so it also has six valence. So I have five atoms that each have six valences, so that's 30 electrons. But remember, that two means two more electrons have been added. So I have a total of 32 electrons available for me. Okay, the one furthest from fluorine is sulfur, so it goes in the middle. So we're going to put sulfur in the middle. Then you have oxygens, each oxygen, each oxygen. Okay, then we check. Is it good? Well, sulfur's good, two, four, six, eight. But each oxygen is just sitting out here with two. So make it full with dots. Two, four, six, there's its eight. So two, 
four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, whoops, those should be dots, eight. And when we do, um, when we grade the test, we do count dots. Okay, so then you double check. This took 32 electrons. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. There's all 32 electrons. The one thing, if it's an ion, you just have to say, okay, the only way I could do this is because I had to borrow a couple of electrons from something to be going. So count the valence electrons as you're going through. Okay, well, let's look at what happens. Not everything just has a single bond. And what happens is you can start having more than one bond if you're bigger atoms that can hold more. And with the bond energy, with the bonds, the bond lengths, a single bond is actually going to be bigger, longer than a double, which is longer than a triple. But the are inversely proportional. Single is less energy than a double. So a triple bond is the shortest and most energy. Okay, but how do I know when we do this? Well, count up the electrons. So oxygen, each oxygen has six, six times two, 12 electrons. So put oxygen in the middle, and I'll show you how we know. I don't know. Let's just double it up like we've said. This is a pencil chapter. Oh my gosh, it is such a pencil chapter. Because look at what I did. Two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. Each oxygen is happy, but count up total electrons you only have 12 electrons. So if I count electrons, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, that doesn't work. So make yourself a note here, okay? To reduce number of electrons, use multiple bonds. What that means, I have too many electrons here. This picture, when your picture shows too many electrons, what you do, that's why we have a pencil, you erase two sets of dots and you're going to say okay well instead it's going to the way it's going to get that it's going to get a double bond so now when I add again each line means two electrons so I'm going to go two four six eight yay oxygen's good two four six eight this oxygen's good two four six eight ten twelve this one's good yay okay look what happens with nitrogen ten five plus five each nitrogen has five so there's ten electrons available Nitrogen. Nitrogen. I forgot what Mrs. Mahoney said, so I'm just going to double everything. Okay? And then we've got a belt in because you go, yay, this has eight, this has eight. Double check. You only have 10 electrons. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Ooh, way too many. That's why I use my pencil. Even if I double bond. If I double bond, that'd be two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Still too many. It's kind of a trial and error sometimes of what you're doing. Again, pencil. So what does that mean? You had to do a triple bond in nitrogen. Two, four, six, eight. Nitrogen's happy. Two, four, six, eight. This nitrogen's happy. Count total electrons. Two, four, six, eight. Ten electrons. Now it's good. Okay, one more. If we look at this, CO2. Add them up. Four electrons plus 12 coming from the oxygen. So 12 plus four, 16 electrons. 12 plus 4 is 16. Yes, always double check my math when I'm doing these. Carbon goes in the middle. And again, oxygen on each side. I'm just drawing it to check. See if I got lucky. Hoping we got lucky. Okay, then we start adding. 2, 4, 6, 8. Everything has 8. So we've got that half done. Now we add up to electrons. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Oh man. Here comes the racer. So race there. Whoa, I didn't mean to race that much. So what do we have to do? We're going to have to put our oxygen back first. We didn't race those dots. So if we put a double bond there, double bond there. Each two that you want to reduce is one double bond. So I needed, I had four too many electrons. That's how I knew I needed two more bonds. You start to figure that out. If not, you can take it one at a time. I'm just trying to speed along the podcast. So if you look at two, four, six, eight, oxygen's good. Two, four, six, whoa, not good. See, count, double check. So erase those. It doesn't need that anymore. That's why we check. So two, four, six, eight, oxygen's good. Two, four, six, eight, now carbon's good. Two, four, six, eight, now oxygen's good. Okay, but final check. 16 electrons. 
2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So we did it. Yay! We did it. We made everything look like it has 8 with only using 16 electrons. So let's talk about some of the exceptions to the octet rule. So that means these don't always want to have 8 around it. First one we're going to look and we see sometimes is a beryllium iodide. Now these happen with the larger halogens a lot of times. Beryllium, I know you're probably going, wait, it wants to be ionic. If it's with the halogen that has a really small electronegativity, what happens is when you draw it, and if you look at it, beryllium only has two electrons. So beryllium, if you look, only has two valence electrons. Okay, let's do the math. The math is still going to make sense. So you have 14 plus the two, you have 16 electrons available for this. So if I put iodine around it, put iodine, iodine wants to have its eight, that's not changing, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, but count your electrons. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. That's the only electrons you have. So therefore, that is full. You do not have any electrons, so beryllium does not get a lone prayer. Okay, that also happens with the aluminum with a big halogen. More common, let's kind of focus on what you're probably going to see more, and that's going to be a boron compound. Same thing, look at boron's valences. It has three. Each chlorine has 21, or excuse me, each chlorine has 7. 7 times 3 is 21, so I have 24 electrons available. Boron goes in the middle. You're going to put a chlorine around it. Then each chlorine wants to have 8. So counting 2, 4, 6, even if you forget, you're like, okay, yay, la di da di da, everything wants 8. When I go back and count, 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, you would go 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, okay. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26! You're going, wait, oh, I'm so confused, what can I do? Okay, remember, boron is an exception. What do you do? You remember, boron does not want to have 3. There it is, stable without the electrons. <clears throat> okay, there are some times that they get to have a few more. The reality is, let's not worry about those right now because let's just, um, in pre-AP, we're not going to focus so much. Just want to know that sometimes it happens. So if you take AP, you can't say I lied to you. We just maybe didn't tell you the whole story. Um, resonance, we can kind of talk about tomorrow in class. What resonance is, is if you can draw that double bond in more than one place. So we will see you tomorrow.